Hi there. We are going to have a little talk tonight about chakras and hip hop. And for any of you who know me well or, you know, follow things on Instagram or on social media, you are very clear on the fact that I love me some hip hop. I love rap, rap music. I love that genre. I love R&B. I love all of those pieces. And being a, an extremely spiritual and energetic and tender and loving and healing woman, which is very much part of who I am, this real gritty, aggressive, sometimes grimy rap music also is part of who I am. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that because there is a reason behind it. There is an energetic pull that makes those pieces, those different artistic expressions in our world come together for very legitimate reasons. So this is what I got for you. <clears throat> because it's not just me, honestly. Uh, hip hop is the most consumed musical genre in the United States. It's in the top uh, worldwide, but specifically the Americas, North America, excuse me, it is the most consumed musical genre and it's been that way for a minute. And again, there's a reason behind that. There's a reason why energetically it speaks to us as humans and as people. And that reason is because of the chakra system. So let's talk about that a little bit. I think that most people have heard of the term chakras whether or not you know what it is, that's a different story. So I'm going to give you like a real quick, like 15 second <laughs> explanation on chakras. And then we'll talk about the specifics of how it relates to hip hop and rap music. So the word chakra is a Sanskrit term for wheel. And the belief system around chakras is that we have seven, some, there is uh, evidence that there are more than seven chakras in our body but there are seven main ones that every belief system, every thought system, every theory acknowledges. So we have these seven chakras in our system and chakra, as I said, means wheel and it refers to an energetic wheel. And if you wanna put some visualization to it, think of like a fan, really. It's, it's, a, it's a circle, it's a wheel, and it's, I say fan because it spins energetically this chakra this wheel spins not unlike the double helix of our dna right this spiralic cyclical energy um <clears throat> so we have these seven fans basically that rise up through the midpoint the center of our body the first one is called the base or the root chakra and that sits right 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 at the base of our spine at our perineum Per perineum, perineum. I always have a hard time saying that word, but it's right at the base of our uh, spinal cord and our spinal column. That is our base chakra, our, our root chakra. And that has to do with family of origin. That has to do with our current home life. That has to do with feeling like we have a space and that we like belong here in this world. You know, like here I am, I'm born, I exist now. Um, moving up to our sacral chakra, that is kind of like a couple fingers below our belly button. It's right where our reproductive organs are. And specifically for women, that's right in our womb space. This is our creative, sexual, sensual, energetic chakra. This is where our relationships live. These are, this is where our appetites and our desires live. So the sacral chakra right there between our hips, I mean, we're talking like Shakira, like hips don't lie. Like we, our body will tell us what we are a yes and what we are a no to. And that sacral chakra holds a lot of power because as I said, it's where our sexual energy lives. And I'm not talking just about sex <laughs> uh, in terms of like, you know, intercourse between two people. I'm talking about creative energy, life force energy, the coming together of, of two forces masculine and feminine energy, as if you're not already sick of hearing me talk about that already, the coming together of those two forces to create new life, whether that life is a human life or an artistic creation or a new business um, or a political system, whatever, it doesn't matter. So all of that energy and that creativity lives in our sacral chakra. Life force energy lives there. And then our third one is kind of right here beneath our rib cage, and that's our solar plexus chakra. And that's about self-esteem, that's about power, that's about asserting our will, that's about being like, yo, I got some shit to do, I'm gonna create something, I'm gonna go get something. This is kind of where our hustle lives, quite honestly. Then we move up to our heart chakra, which is right here in the center. 
and heart chakra is exactly what you think it is. It's about our ability to give and receive love. It's about our sense of love for ourselves. It's compassion, it's gentleness, it's tenderness. All of that lives right here in our heart chakra. Then we have our throat chakra, which has to do with communication. Not only communication as in I'm speaking to you right now when you're listening, but the internal dialogue as well. Like, how do I speak to myself? Am I listening to myself? Am I listening to the desires of that sacral chakra? So communication, both external and internal, live here. Our third eye right here is our intuitive knowing. So our third eye has to do with the things that we see beyond the physical. So we've talked before about how our physical eyes and our physical ears can sometimes do us a disservice. Being in communion and connection with our third eye chakra will help us tap into the other things that we can see beyond what our physical eyes have to tell us. And then we have our crown chakra right here, and that has to do with our connection to source. Whatever your source is, whether that is God, whether that is the universe, whether that is nature, I don't care what it is, but that connection to like, hey, there's some other thing that I'm a part of, and this is how I communicate with it. So those that's a quick overview of the, the seven chakras. And the point of that chakra energy is for it to ascend. So it lives at the base chakra. And as, as I said, it's a fan, so it wants to spin. And what's really important about this, and this is where we start getting into music, is that they start out spinning slow, like the base chakra is a slow spin. And then as we move up to the sacral and then the solar plexus and then the heart and then the throat and then that third eye and the crown, it starts spinning faster and faster and faster. And that relates to music because if you think about notes, the bass line in a musical scale is really slow and really fat. And it makes me think of that movie Fantasia. I might be dating myself a little bit, but it was a Disney movie and they put visuals to symphony. And there was a particular piece where it had just images and, and the bass lines where they were fat, they were slow, they were low. And if you think about it, when you hear a car coming down the street and if they've got their music turned up, not only can you hear it, you can for sure hear it, but sometimes you can feel that bass line because it is so dense. It is heavy, it is dense, and it is representative of the slowness of our root chakra. And then as I said, you move up in those chakras and, and the pace of the spinning gets faster and faster. And that is displayed in music because if you get all the way up to like a flute or like a violin, that high pitch frequency is a lot faster if you were to watch it from a vibrational standpoint. So <clears throat> to swing it all back to hip hop and rap music, the beat is always first. When it comes to laying down a track, when it comes down to um, creating uh, a hip hop song or a rap song, the beat is always first. And it starts with that bass line. I mean, the bass line is kind of like what holds a lot of things down, right? And the reason why that matters from a chakra-based perspective is because music is vibration, right? And vibration affects other vibration. It's like a lake where things ripple out, hit the shore, and then ripple back. Or they ripple out here and there's a ripple coming and then they interact and something happens when those ripples come together. They ripple in a different direction or it disrupts the beautiful pattern of the ripple that initially started. The same thing happens energetically for us with our chakras. Now, if each one of these chakras has a very specific human manifestation or representation of, you know, this is about my home life, this is about my appetites and desires, this is about my hustle, my self-will, my self-esteem, those ripples, AKA those vibrations from that music affect our body. It affects the specific vibration of each chakra. So if anyone's ever been to a sound healing or um, you know, when you talk about music uh, or high pitch note breaking glass, the reason that it does that is because of the frequency and the vibration. And quite honestly, that's why music in general, no matter what genre, is so powerful and so profound because it hits us on a very visceral, very vibrational level. So when it comes to hip hop and rap music, the vibes that get put out in that space hit on our root chakra, our sacral chakra, and our solar plexus chakra primarily. 
And that matters from a therapeutic standpoint because all the shit <laughs> that we struggle with and all the things that are quote unquote wrong with us, the things that we go to therapy for, the things that we do yoga for, the things that we work out to um, fix, the things that we, um, I don't know, hold circles and go on ayahuasca journeys. The reason why we do all of that stuff, all that self-actualization, empowerment stuff is because we've got blockages, we've got energetic congestion, and it's always about those first three chakras. It's always about our family of origin, it's our mommy issues, our daddy issues, our abandonment issues. It's about our self-esteem and whether or not we feel like we're deserving of things, or whether or not we feel worthy of something, or am I allowed to want what I want? Is that okay? Can I have what I want? And then when we get into this self-esteem place right here with our solar plexus chakra, that is a huge one. Our confidence, our hustle, our drive, we get really, really scared. And the reason why we're scared up here is because we are unhealed down here. We've got foundational issues that need attention. So we go to yoga, we go to therapy, we work out, we sing, we dance, we cry, we scream, whatever. And hip hop, rap music speaks to those three spaces right here. It vibrates in that way. It starts to rumble and trigger some of the things that are going on in here. And intuitively, we want that. Intuitively, we know we need that because intuitively, our bodies know that, hey, my root chakra fan is not spinning. It's already slow as it is. And with all that you know, congestion and all that family of origin, inner child shit, it's really slowing it down. So that energy can't ascend and move up through the remaining chakras. So you listen to hip hop, you listen to rap, and it kind of like starts to motivate and bring up some of that stuff. And in particular here, this hustle, this like aggression, this solar plexus energy, the swag and the assumptiveness that comes through in most hip hop and rap music, we love that because it gives us permission to be just as boss and just as hard as the music is representing. And if we're not feeling like that on the inside every day of the week, then listening to that type of music is gonna activate that chakra and it's gonna make us feel that thing that we are trying to intuitively feel all the time. And as I said, that is true on a root chakra level. I wanna feel grounded, I wanna feel rooted, I wanna feel like I belong somewhere. From a sacral chakra level, I wanna feel connected, I want to feel alive and juicy and vivacious. And from a solar plexus level, I want to feel like I can do what I want. I want to feel like I can show up. I can handle my business. I can do my thing. So I hope you followed all that because the invitation here is to understand the other things that are going on when you listen to your music. Yes, the words matter. The lyrics absolutely matter. Those things speak to our heart for sure. And the music matters, the beat matters, the frequency matters, the vibration matters, because it speaks to how our body, which is a vibrational thing, remember it's an energetic bundle, it speaks to how our body receives those vibrations and what it's activating in here, you know? So I get questions sometimes. I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a very, <laughs> uh, I would say liberal, very all-encompassing, very loving, feminist, empowered creature. And I don't listen mind listening to like juveniles back that ass up, you know what I mean? And I don't mind listening to things that maybe from a verbal standpoint are not the most um, respectful of the female race. And <clears throat> uh, while there are certain things that just don't vibrate with my body, I'm like, and eh, I'm a no to that one. That's a little too aggressive for me. I also can appreciate the other things that are going on within the music and can appreciate the fact that like, hell yeah, when, you know, when they're saying whatever they're saying, it hits on, on my, you know, my flow in here and it brings that out of me. And, you know, I, I don't take it so personally. In fact, I honor what it is doing for me. I honor and appreciate the, you know, the sex appeal, the swag, the empowerment, the juice and the activation of my lower three chakras because it helps move that energy. And the point of chakra energy is to ascend. As I said, it spirals up and it ascends and it comes up our crown chakra and out. And that's ultimately how we manifest the things of our life. So enjoy the music that you enjoy. As always, listen to your body and what it's asking for and allow yourself a little swag, a little baseline, a little, mm, a little grittiness potentially when it comes to your music. 
i love you.